So I couldn't have been very old. Maybe, um, I don't know. I was just, I was in grade school, I know that. But, <clears throat> um, I was at the library. And, um, and I was, oh, hi, Jay. Hi. Um, I was, I was just telling Deb about my first fishing trip. Um, you like fishing, don't you? Yeah, I do it on occasion. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I was, I, 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 I wasn't very old. I, I know I was in elementary school, probably third or fourth grade. And I was at the library. And you go fishing at the library, don't you? No, I typically have gone to the ocean. The ocean? Yes. Well, I suppose I suppose you could go fishing at the ocean. Anyway, <clears throat> I was I went to the library and I I didn't really intend to go fishing there that day, but the occasion arose, so when I came out of the library, there was this kid that was sitting on the steps, and he he looked really sad, and I sat down next to him and asked him what was going on, and he started telling me what was what was wrong, and I just started. <clears throat> sharing with him about Jesus. Oh. Now, where do they keep the fish at the library? Oh. <clears throat> no, I mean the other kind of fishing. The other kind of fishing? Yeah. You know, when when Jesus was <clears throat> was first starting his ministry, he told Peter and and, and Andrew and James and John that if they go with, if he follow me, he said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Well, I guess you can use some of the same bait. So nice. the so the first fish, fish I caught was almost as tall as me. How big was the first fish you caught? My first fish was about this big. Oh, I got you beat there, don't I? <laughs> Old. Yeah, well, I was older than the you, but that was my first experience at being a fisher of men. Okay. I'll never forget it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have some, some kids today at Kids Corner. They'll get excited about being fishers of men. Let's go see if we can if we can excite some kids about being fishers of men. Sounds like fun. All right. Let's do that. See you in a couple of minutes. Skittle sky, skittle dip. I gotta get the wiggles out of me I wanna hear the story, it's gonna be fun Cause hearing about Jesus is for everyone So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me I wanna shake my hands, I'm gonna shake my feet I'm gonna shake my head, gonna groove to the beat Cause I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me Wiggle, 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 freeze! Wiggle, 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 freeze! I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me. I'm gonna shake my hands, I'm gonna shake my feet, I'm gonna shake my head, gonna groove to the beat, cause I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me. Oh, I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me 
wiggle, 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 freeze. Wiggle, 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 freeze. I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me. Skittly scat, skittly dick. I gotta get the wiggles out of me I wanna hear the story, it's gonna be fun Cause hearing about Jesus is for everyone So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me Oh, oh, I said I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the wiggles out of me Take it down and freeze Hey, how are you doing, kids? Today's Bible story is about Jesus calling the first four disciples that he called. He called Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. And he called... James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Now, those four were fishermen. I don't mean just for fun, for sport. That was their job. They, were, they probably were pretty good at it since that's the way they made their living. Now, here's what, here's what happened. You can read about it in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And there's other places too. You can read about it in, in, in Matthew as well. But in Luke chapter 5, it says that, that Jesus was teaching along the shore of what most people call the Sea of Galilee. And when he was done teaching, he, he looked over and he saw two boats. And next to the two boats were Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John. And they were, they were washing their nets. The reason they were washing their nets is because they were they had gotten done fishing for the for the day. They fished at night. And they had finished their fishing and they were washing their nets and getting them ready to, to put back into the into the boats uh, for the next night's fishing. And Jesus looks at Peter. And he says to him, launch out into the deep and put down your nets. <laughs> and, and, and Peter says to him, Master, kind of like teacher, because he had just been listening to Jesus teach. And he says, Master, we just worked all night long and we didn't catch anything. I don't know about you. I've been fishing and there's times where I just haven't caught anything. Matter of fact, most of the time when I go fishing, I just don't catch anything at all. I guess I'm not a very good fisherman. People all around me are catching fish and I don't catch anything. My dad once told me that I don't fish, I just drown worms. Anyway, Simon says to Jesus, we worked all night long, we haven't caught anything. Nevertheless, because you told me to do it, we'll go out and we'll try again. 
Now remember, they had just washed their nets. Now they're going to go out and they're going to try one more time. They're going to dirty their nets again to try and catch fish. So they went out and they threw out their nets in one boat. And they got so many fish in the net that their net was starting to break. So they called their partners, James and John, and they came out and they had to help them get their net and the fish into the boat. There were too many fish in the net to even get it in the boat. Can you imagine how many fish that would be? Wow. Now remember, this is how they made their living. Catching fish and selling them. Well, when Peter saw that happening and he got all the fish into the boats, and it took both boats. They got all those fish in the boats and they got back to shore. And Peter looked at Jesus and he said, Oh, Master, depart from me. In other words, you, you, better, you better go away, Jesus. Go away from me. He says, I'm, I am, I'm a sinful man. You, you don't want to have anything to do with me. Did you ever feel that way? Did you ever feel like Jesus shouldn't have anything to do with you because you've done too many bad things in your life? That's the way Simon felt. It's the way Peter, that was his other name, was Simon Peter. And Jesus said, from now on, he says, if you follow me, I will teach you to be fishers of men. In fact, that's our memory verse for today. We took the memory verse, the account of it. Matthew says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Instead of being fishers of fish, Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. Jesus wasn't afraid to be around Simon Peter because Peter had made mistakes and Peter had done wrong things. He said to him, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Hmm. And it says that when they got the boats all the way to shore, that immediately Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John left immediately. They didn't even sell the fish. They immediately left everything and followed Jesus. They left everything. Nothing else mattered to them. They just wanted to follow Jesus. That's kind of the way we need to be. When Jesus calls us, when you, when you hear Jesus talking to, to your heart, telling you, come with me, come follow me, we need to just leave everything else and just follow him. He'll change our lives, just like he changed the lives of Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. 
They were fishermen before that were fishing for fish in the ocean. Jesus changed their lives. And he taught them how to catch men and teach them how to follow Jesus. He'll change your life too. Just like he changed my life. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray right now that you would speak to the hearts of the boys and the girls and the moms and the dads, even the grandmas and grandpas that might be watching this. And I pray, Jesus, that as you speak to their hearts, you would speak to them and tell them to come and follow you. That you would help them, Lord, to believe on you. And that you would change their hearts. That you would make them willing to follow you. And that they would say, yes, Jesus. That they'll leave everything behind and follow you so that you can change their lives. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. God bless you. If you made that decision to follow Jesus this week, later on there will be a place on the screen that will tell you where to email me. It's songofjoychurch.com Song of Joy Church at gmail.com. Let me say that again so I get it right. At Song of Joy Church at gmail.com. Email me. Tell me that you decided to follow Jesus so he can change your life. I'd love to hear from you. God bless. Bye bye.
Hi. Hi. It's time for craft time with Mr. J. Hey. I'm Mr. J. This is my crafting assistant, Darlene. Hi. Today, our craft is going to be fishing poles and some fish. You can go get like some wooden dowels, or you can even use everyone's favorite popsicle stick. It's loading. Fasten a. I'm making Some it yarn float. or string to the end of your stick. I was making it float on the floor. We did it the hard way. We put a nail in there and tied some yarn to the end of the nail. And on the other end, we're going to cut it short because I think I made it a little too long, even for me. Mm, come on, I think I tried a fake. But then you want to take and you want to tie a paper clip. And watch as my assistant steals my pen. <laughs> I thought I didn't notice I steal your pen. And make sure it's tied on there good. Because that's going to work as our hook. And then we went over to our local store and bought some magnetic, a magnetic strip or tape, whatever you want to call it. And we are going, we also cut out some various fishies. And we have wonderful fish here. And here my assistant, let go. What I'm going to do is I am you going... You have a baby now, I am going to write the name of... Some people that I love that I want to see know God. Daddy. Yeah? Come listen. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something you should put on that piece. What? Come listen. And I was playing at you. They'll be confused. Okay. I, wanna... I put some names of people I know on there. Oh, his real name is Chris. <laughs> Empty Social and Uncle Tiny Sushi Shark. <laughs> and the reason why we got this particular what? magnet strip stuff is because it one side is already sticky. And we can stick that to our fishy. It's just easier than trying to glue a magnet there. There's a few bucks. Well, we don't pin these things too. And. I, I totally forgot. I'm going to <laughs> actually put this magnet on the back of this fish because otherwise it's going to cover up the name. Made, made my swordfish a little small for a swordfish. Swordfish and, and the unicorn of the sea. My wonderful girl here has a narwhal. 
Pick up the show the narwhal to the And you're on the side. It's quite a bit bigger than the rest of the fish. Alright, here. Just one moment. You know what? I'll put the magnet on your other fish. Until Oh, I forgot one of my third fish. Really, if you are doing it this way, you're not coming up with an alternative plan. I don't think you really need a huge sliver of magnet. Just enough so you're... Uh, it'll lift up with our wonderful metal friend. Try it, try it. Oh, uh, yeah, try it. <laughs> he kind of has to. And I was going it. to wait to demonstrate that until I was done. But my camera person, also known as and my wife, yeah. was yelling at me to try it. I'm just kind of going to draw the narwhal scared. All right, I'm going to need your narwhal in a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I and you can let the kids put this on. I mean, what, you might want to cut it as an adult. Otherwise, they might wind up with a strip like this long for a fish this big. We don't want that. Actually, going to. I'm kind of making my narwhal. Okay, where do you want the magnetic strip at? The back. Like All right, the flip it over real quick. Flip it over real quick. Okay, perfect. Not terribly towards the front, and then what we're going to do? I'm going to let her play with her fish. The draw on her fish. Yeah. This thing can actually magnet to the clip. You can put them on the floor, or you can toss oh them on the table, depending on how long you have made your fishing line. I've made mine too long to really do it on the table successfully. But this, and we are fishers of men. Because we have put names of our friends on the fish. This one is my friend Chris. And, and remember Matt. our memory verse today? Matthew 419. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Yay! Can I just join the little scale? If you want to do 20, you can make or how many ever, a uh, higher amount than just like three. You can make a game of it, and the kids can play and see how many of their friends they can catch and who can catch more. All right. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Change my heart, oh God Make it ever true Change my heart, oh God May I be like you Change my heart, oh God My heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the Potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make. This is what I pray. Change 
title for today's entry is God's Thoughts. Yes, they are. <laughs> Let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to Him. Romans 12, 2. It's sometimes hard to make the right choice. Yep. Especially if everyone around you is doing something different. It makes it really hard. But God can help. Ask God to help you focus on things that please Him. Ask Him to help adults do that, too. We know He loves words that help instead of hurt. He's happy when we share what we have with others. He sees good in everyone. When you fix your mind on what is important to God, He can help you make hard decisions. You may be the only one who chooses what God wants, but that's just fine. It's very fine. It's amazing when you can do that when no one else is doing it. Who knows? Others might even follow your lead. Thought of the day. Good thoughts lead to good actions. By the way, words can hurt a lot. Okay, time for the prayer. Dear God, please help me to be strong and make the right choice, even if it feels like I'm the only one. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you later. Bye. Bye. on their way to the stuff mark when something caught Madame Blueberry's eye. Mm -hmm. I thank God for this day, for the sun in the sky, for my mom and my dad, for my piece of apple pie, for our home on the ground, for his love that's all around. That's why I say thank I don't think we can afford that right now, Junior. How about a ball? Thank you, Dad, for our day, for our trip to the mall, for the time just with me, for my big red bouncy ball, for the fun that we had. I'm so happy you're my dad. That's why I say thanks every day. Because a thankful heart is a happy heart. For a 
God who really cares. And he listens to our prayers. That's why I say thanks every day. That's why we say thanks every day. How did that song go again? Let's see. We thank God for this day, for the sun in the sky, for the friends that we have, for our yummy apple pie, for the love that he shares, cause he listens to our prayers. That's why we say thanks every day, because a thankful heart is a happy heart. We're glad for what we have, that's an easy way to start. For the love that he shares Cause he listens to our prayers That's why we say thanks every day That's why we say thanks every day Hey kids, it's time for Thanks Banks. These are praying hands. Well, the hands actually don't pray. But a lot of people fold their hands when they pray. A lot of people bow their heads when they pray. A lot of people raise their hands when they pray. I'm not sure it really matters. You know, when we talk to God, It's our heart that really matters. So, let's just talk to God. When, uh, that's what our thanks banks are really all about. We write down on that piece of paper what we're thankful for. And we put it in our thanks bank. So what are you thankful for today? Oh, I'm thankful that Jesus has changed my heart. I'm thankful that he's given me the privilege of being able to lead some people to Jesus. To be a Fisher of men. I'm not very good when it comes to fishing for fish. But I'm glad he's enabled me to catch some men and lead them to Jesus. Yeah. That's what I'm thankful for. That that's what I get to do. So, whether you fold your hands when you pray or if you bow your head or if you raise your hands and lift your head doesn't really matter. It's what's in your heart. Sometimes I pray when I'm driving my car down the road. Yeah, I guess if I'm doing that, I better not have my eyes closed. Huh? Let's pray today. Thank the Lord that he's a God that changes hearts. That he can change mine and that he can change yours. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you're a God that changes hearts. That you're a God that has changed my heart. That you're a God that changes the hearts of boys and girls and moms and dads and even grandmas and grandpas. 
Would you give us opportunities this week, Lord, to tell other people about Jesus? To tell other people how he's changed our hearts and ask them if they'd like to give their hearts to Jesus and let him change their hearts too? That's part of how we are fishers of men. It's just telling what you've done for us and that he can do it for them too. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'll see you next week right here on Kids Corner. And if you have the opportunity to share Jesus with somebody, email me and tell me about it at songofjoychurch at gmail.com. I want to hear about how you shared Jesus with somebody this week. God bless. Bye-bye.